everybody welcome to behind the music obviously this is episode one and you know what we do around here first of all it's just vibes because uh, we are vibrant people vibrant people just vibe you know what it is yeah. so we get people who are creative um artists musicians whatnot creative in whatever way and we just get behind the art that we see to see the person and we get in and whatever we we get to us the way to use we get we get you find the word yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get oh my god we we get personal or whatever we we know we, we get intimate mm, well that's a bit tricky but yeah. we anyway you person know what i'm trying to yeah, say person is the person uh, yeah, person yes person is exactly the yeah yeah you know three creatives and we have to come up with the word <laughs> shame on us the lord is disappointed every day yeah. but yeah guys thank you so much for coming here if you are watching this video thank you so much i am joined by mr s isao isao chale i've never said his first name i always call him mr c mm. <laughs> mr iso some say isao Iso Chalema, thank you so much. If you love him like I love him, just call him Mr. C. Oh yeah. I was supposed to do a club. It's the easiest way. <laughs> yes. So please, I'm here with Mr. C, and I'm here with. I said I'll never call him by his artist name ever again because I found out his real name is Thompson. I'm here with Thompson. I'll let him say his artist name alone. Uh, TCM Green. TCM Green. <laughs> so yeah. Um. Mr C is an amazing phenomenal worshipper from the time I met him I said mm, this man of god is anointed oh, mm-hmm. super like mm, wow Jesus Christ yeah and then now look at us all on the same panel together I've made it in life yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've made it in life I've made it in life and yeah my boy Thompson as well poetry I don't know why you do everything poetry yeah. rap sing everything listen to the music you know what he does mm-hmm. all right yo so I'm just going to dive into whatever it is we're going to talk about i really wanted to pick on mental health because i've seen with even your latest drop yeah. i was getting a lot of hints about like dealing with mental health and even just like your posts everything you oh, pretty yeah. much post is you know mental health so yeah man why why can't you post you know <laughs> cuz you know like you Beyonce. mentioning it here <laughs> now has me thinking about like now has me realizing how much i actually i think post about it and talk about it so yeah um ish i i feel like the the development for it for me is i think after you experience something but also like i always say like um when i was starting to do music it was mainly for the people and having great passion for the people right mm. and then i have this thing where if i go through something i'm always thinking this obviously another person that's able to experience it for the fact that I'm human yeah. and I feel like this or I mm. feel sad there's another person experiencing it but then I I really have I, I like to say I have so much care within me mm. when I'm going through something I never want another person to go mm. through it right so I feel like after going through a phase where I was dealing with so much as a person and not having like people to share it with yeah. let me not say people not having the courage to talk about it mm. you know what i mean because yeah. uh, i'm a very reserved person mm. i don't really talk about stuff or share stuff as much so going through so much in secret and having people around you but failing to talk about it mm. i think pushed me to say you know what i think i want to talk about this issue a lot but also yeah. realizing and looking at how it was greatly trivialized like yeah. especially in these parts of the world cuz you know like we come from homes where if you tell your parents you're depressed the question is why at your age do you know what i mean what do you mean about what at your age you're not married you're not you're not married you're, you're not, married, like, you're not yeah. being abused yeah. so what you know what's, what's I mean? the, who's depressing you <laughs> so i got yeah. to realize that we we look at depression or any mental health issues to be in a certain category and mm-hmm. then i think the time Okay, not I don't want to say it like I'm so old, but I'll say the time <laughs> I was growing up, you know what mm. I mean? Every time we heard mental health, we thought of someone that's mad. Yeah, we, we, the first thing that came to our head is obviously no China and yeah, what not, exactly. not, you know what yeah. I mean? But as you start to learn more and research more about mental health, you begin to realize like it it can come from even simple basic traumatic experiences, simple mm. basic things that we go through yeah. as people. So I was like, you know what? Having experienced so much and going through 
a phase like this yeah. i think i really want to address it but mainly also to create awareness to educate people to be like you know what mm. whatever age you're at whatever like category you're in in life you yeah. can still experience this so it's you can't ask a person why or how come you know what mm. i mean so mm-hmm. because you don't know how people really deal with like traumatic experiences it's different mm. there are people who are going to go through a heartbreak and that thing just messes up the entire life you know mm. that with mental health and then there are people who be like ah but it's just a breakup but exactly. you don't know how it got yeah. to the other person so i feel like i just really wanted to create a lot of awareness around it and to speak for people that don't have the courage to really share experiences because yeah. i feel like when i really talk about this stuff in my music there's a lot of people that relate and there's a lot of people that are like you know what you really spoke my heart out so mm. that's pretty much i think yeah in a nutshell, that's how I put it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In a nutshell, it's quite, it's quite a... Uh, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a <laughs> nutshell. <laughs> it's a big nutshell. There, there are several ground nuts in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. several ground nuts in there. Um, Another thing is, like, what, like, I'm, I'm failing to get, especially, like, now, is, yeah. like, why? Like, why is it so hard, right, to, like, just talk about it? Like, you know, like, what what are those things that make it hard for me to open up someone and say I'm not okay? Well, I think that one of the reasons why a lot of people have failed to actually first of all come out and actually say what it is that's affecting mm. them is because of I think uh, pointing back to what uh, T C Hammond said earlier on, mm. we the way we are brought up, yeah. we have been uh, we are in a culture that makes us hide our emotions mm. and mostly especially i think on the male, male side, side yeah. yeah on the male side you're not supposed to show an emotion mm. you're supposed to be strong yeah. you should be stronger for the other person mm. and things like that so yeah. because of that the minute that you start going through something you do not want to come out weak yeah. because it's going to look like ah, this guy is weak how can he be going through yeah. such you know mm. and because of that, we just want to hold it in. Mm. And I feel the longer a person holds it in, the more effect it has on them. Yeah. 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 Uh, all of a sudden, somebody starts to lose weight. Others don't mm. even lose. They end up gaining. Yeah. 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 Mm. Because they'll start stress eating, whatever it may be. But it's it's just, I think it's the, the way we've been brought up. Mm. Partly. Yeah. We, we feel like if you share something... It's a sign of weakness. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, I think just to add on when he says, like, the way we've been brought up, eh? We come from a culture where we're like, um, it's like we're taught that hiding your emotions is strength. Mm. But truth is, sharing your emotions is strength. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're always brought up in, like, like you said, on the male side, especially, where you're not supposed to show your weakness, mm. so show, your, show your pain and whatnot. Mm. But also, show I think what, what yeah. puts us in that position mm. is the fear or the question of will people understand? Mm-hmm. Because like I mentioned earlier, people tend to trivialize issues. And so I, f- I tend to feel like, oh, because I can deal with this easy, I'm thinking it's the same way for Josh mm-hmm. or yeah. for Mr. C. Mm-hmm. But then the truth is, I don't know how Mr. C is going to cope with a very tiny experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? So most of the times we're in positions where we're thinking, ah, if I share this, are they go- how are they going to look at me? Exactly. But also there's just a certain way that I feel because of how we're brought up, we're scared of vulnerability. Yeah, We're just really scared to be vulnerable mm-hmm. because we feel like it tends to change the image and the view of how people see us, especially if we're at a certain platform. Yeah, And when I talk about platform, I'm talking about, Ali said, this, I think in, in one of the songs I said, it's hard to cry out for help to the people that call you their inspiration or mm-hmm. people that look up to you. And so you find that even with parents or with anyone, we tend to feel like if I share this, how th- will the next person see me? How mm. will Josh see me? How will Mr. C see me? Mm. Because probably they look at me at a certain level. So me telling them, oh, guys, like I'm going through this. I'm thinking, uh, are they going to understand? Mm. Or will they think less of me? So, yeah. Yeah. I like, I like what Mr. C said about, like, you know, you can gain weight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then no problem. Yeah. 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 If you are going through something, you're going to start losing yeah. weight. Yeah. And all those things. Yeah. But then we've got other people that ha- have got um, this tendency of 
the minute they start going through something, the they'll put on a mask. Mm. Yeah. And the minute they put on the mask, they'll always be sli- smiling, cracking yeah. jokes yeah, exactly. and things like that. Yeah. And you look at them and you feel like, this guy is doing fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah and yeah. you're like, ah. And the minute he tries or she tries to share yeah. to say, okay, you know what? This is what I'm really going through. You and I, you come and tell me something exactly. else. You know, like the That's way you're. Crazy. No, yeah. not you. Tell me yeah. something else. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, like he said, it's like we 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 trivialize things. Mm. Yeah, and we need. I don't know how, but we need to learn to take certain things seriously. Now, mm. then again, we don't need to go to the extreme. Anything exactly. that comes up, and then we just think of it on the worst part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, I also feel like. There's this whole thing of where there's things that trend on social media, right? Yeah. There's my phases of whatever happens, like it's, there's a trending topic or scenario or something, yeah. right? And I kind of feel like mental health awareness has also now just kind of fallen into like the trend. The trend. So now it's like, oh, ah, well, well, what, what, hey, hashtag mental health. Yes, and, and, and hashtag mental health. And so now it's also being put in the light of if someone is really struggling, it's like ah, they just want attention because now everyone is talking He's about talking mental about health. So, ah, nine, ah, even me, mental health, guys, guys. It's like, ah, bro, exactly. And so, like, how have you felt like that battle where you're, you're speaking about mental health and you're passionate about it, but then people are just kind of like, it's just going with the trend. Mm. Uh, ish. not necessarily. Mm. Uh, first thing I think to add on to one of the things you said. Uh, one thing I'll mention about this whole struggle is, it's hard to really know by seeing someone, mm. their pain and their struggle. You know what I mean? And then coming to what you're saying, where you're talking about, like the pressure and the trends. First of mm. all, I'll be honest to say. I, I at some point also thought like this looks like a trend, like yeah. everybody's yeah. jumping on it, <laughs> and I think I feel like the problem that comes in with people looking at it as a trend, I think that it came from the fact that a lot of people also don't understand mental health to the depth mm. because we want to rush and put everything in a box of, oh, that's depression. But mental mm. health is deeper than depression. There's a lot of other parts in mental health. So sometimes you might not be depressed as per se, mm. but you might just be dealing with anxiety or something. Yeah. Or you might just be dealing with another portion of it. So I feel like having to understand all of that will help us. But I feel like the other reason why people look at it as a trend is because I feel like for the first time, people are more free to actually express their pain. Yeah. Because we come from a background where we were not free to talk about it. Mm. So it's like, it's not like people have never been struggling, yeah. but it's because now people are more free to share their struggles and exactly. to really express it. Because now they feel like, oh, if if TCM talked about his struggles, I feel like I can talk about it because maybe that's somebody I look up to. Mm. Or if this other artist or this other person talked about it, now I want to share about it. Mm. So I feel like, have I ever got into a point where I feel like people look at me like I'm just following the train? I, mm. I don't really think so. Yeah. And also I think it's, it's, it's I think the, the, the strategies and the way I talk about it mm. and also to the direction and depth that I talk about it. Um, yeah. But like, Sometimes mm. I, I think I have seen posts. I'm also like, mm. eh, okay, this one it looks trendy, trendy. <laughs> but yeah. but I but one thing I'll tell you is I think every time somebody comes up and opens up for me, I'm always like, whether it looks like a trend or not, I really want to get to know this person's struggle. Because mm. what's true? Sometimes just like Mr. C said, sometimes people may not look like they're going through it and exactly. will think they're just seeking attention mm. until somebody commits suicide or somebody dies. Then we're like, yeah. oh, so it was actually serious. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. I don't think I've ever gotten to that point because I think what really drives me is just knowing that I'm not doing it for a train or just doing it for the sake of it. Mm. I think it keeps me yeah. like, you know what, I, I still take the road. Mm. Yeah. yeah, dope. Another thing um, that kind of crossed my mind is like when you're going through like mental health issues or you're realizing mm, maybe I'm not okay, Yeah. like life goes on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um Gail, what point I'm team, uh, you still have to show up in the office. In the Monday. office, yeah. You know yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like the world is not going to stop for you to be like, oh, no, hell, my brother, don't come mm. on Monday because it's yeah. like, you know, there's so now like, how do you, how do you cope with that? And also being like, 
a creative, right? So you're, you're going through this phase where mm, you're trying to figure out what's going on, but then you still want to create. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Because yeah. you know one thing about me is when I'm going through stuff, I can't create. Mm. I, th- I think that's the difference between me and most artists. Because you get to hear a lot of artists talk yeah. about, oh, when I'm sad, I create the best art. Mm. For me, it's different, man. Like, when I'm not right, I can't create the art. For mm. me, it's like I have to go through the phase, heal, and mm. then that's when I can write about it. So even in Nimbo, it was after. Yeah, everything I talk I, I about was, is always. I, was, I, was yeah. actually about to say, <laughs> I didn't want to preempt, but yeah. there is a part in the song that actually talks about being blank. Yeah, like you just yeah. can't put words, words together. together because mm. of what you're going through. Yeah. And I feel that in life there are instances where. Mm when you get to a point where you're going through something and um, at that particular point, because you're failing to share with someone else, you just can't think of the next step. And I also Mm. think it also goes with different personalities that people Mm. have. You know, certain people fail to go beyond a certain point because of what they're going through. But Mm. then, like you said, life still goes on. You still need to show up for work. You still Mm. need to uh, make an appearance, per se. And so because of that... We are trying to be a people that are trying to just go with the flow or mm. maybe just make those appearances so yeah. that we don't attract attention to ourselves. Yeah. And these are people that are now probably they're going through something and they feel they cannot share it. They don't yeah. want to be vulnerable enough mm. and to avoid any questions. So they'll just make their appearances and mm. things like that. And these are the ones that I said earlier on that would come and put on a fake smile. Yeah. And uh, and all those things, just to make it look like, okay, it's all right. Mm. Don't ask me questions. Yeah. Let's just go on with life yeah. the way it is. So they'll show up for work, they'll, they'll do whatever business it is they're doing and things like that. Mm. But when they get home, yeah, that time when they're alone, yeah. Yeah, that's when it hits them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when them. all these thoughts now go through their minds, but you can't go beyond past it. Yeah. 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 So, so, like, for me, man, mm. I, like, I always create... I only write about stuff after I'm over it because I think that's the only time I get back to the right space. Mm. Uh, yeah, but I think there have been times where I still needed to show up regardless because mm. uh, I think Tell I've been us. in moments. Tell us that time. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> okay, I so it's know. like... I think it's it's like... Um, I'll give multiple experiences, right? First of all, I talk about the one, like, recently this year right mm-hmm. so i think there's there's a time we're doing events and then the thing you know about events where you've been booked already you're mm-hmm. not canceling the show <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean yeah. so i still needed to show up and then so we're like performing for a series of time like we're doing it was like during showgrounds mm-hmm. um so we're performing days are going and then on the last day and i, I could feel it like mm-hmm. i'm not in the right space but on the last day, I actually got to a point where I had to fumble my lines because I zoned out in mm. the performance. You know what I mean? So I think there have been many times where I'm not okay, but I have to show up regardless. Yeah. And then most of the times for the people and the fans, it's it's like, ah, maybe something went wrong. Maybe he mm. didn't rehearse enough. But most of the times, I'm always like, it's not like I didn't rehearse enough. Mm. Nah, I just <laughs> didn't have it together. You know what I mean? I think mm. even as far back as 20, 2020, I, I still say this, I, I still feel like I have some sort of performance PTSD from that experience mm. um, I, I'll tell you I, I I rehearse a lot I believe I'm one of like the dopest life performers right amen but amen I got to a point where this one period of time I was so stressed so tired I got to do a show I was headlining the show with mm. other artists and my set was trash because I literally <laughs> forgot lines of everything like because <laughs> the problem with my work is I'm a poet, so it's mm. it's not music. Like poetry, you have so many things you have to remember. Yeah. And I got to a point where I was forgetting lines in every poem. And then it wasn't like that situation where I could improvise. I just wanted to hear. Tell me, that's all. I go on my ticket. You have VIP zone. I go to the table. So it's like, it was a crazy experience for me. Yeah. And I think ever since that period, uh, I again this thing where every time I'm about to perform, it's a huge struggle for me. Mm. Like I really have to be, and like that's the thing. My team is always wondering why I'm always like, we need to rehearse. We need to rehearse. Mm. I'm the people I want to rehearse till like, even the day before or even the morning before the show, mm. just to convince myself like, 
okay, we're good. We can do it. We can mm. do it. So I think it's been a lot of times where I've been in spaces where I'm like, not so okay, but I have to show up still, especially with the art, because I pretty yeah. much do art in every sense. And I think even the time I was going through a, a bad heartbreak or something, mm. I still needed to create music. Because the time I was releasing Renewa Game, I wasn't like in the right space. Mm. But then it was like, because I think Renewa Game. But I the think, song is tough. Yeah. But I, the song is tough. You know, the funny <laughs> part though is I think that's, it was driven by itself, eh? Because Renewa mm. Game was created in a. Uh, like playing around, like we we're just with guys and we we're doing like, uh, you know, like creatives, you're rapping, you're doing mm. what you and then the hook comes and people are like, that sounds dope, let's do it. Yeah. So it was more like, okay, you guys like the song, I'm not fit to jump on the song, so you guys jump on the song, I'll just lay the hook for it. Yeah. And that's how it was. And that's how come I feel, if you notice when you're a game, I'm just on the chorus throughout the song. Mm. Yeah. So this has gotten me thinking. Um, I've listened to when you're a game yeah. and then... My all-time favorite is uh, God's, God's Dialect like Men. Men. Yeah. When I heard God's Dialect like Men, I was like, um, I did not think of it as in you being in the situation. In the situation. Mm. I thought you were just trying to bring out, you know, an awareness. Yeah. Yeah. But I related yeah. to it, the part that you even mentioned earlier on when we were starting, that there's a part where you say, it's very difficult to come out to those that actually look up to yeah. you, like to be vulnerable to those that mm. actually look up to you. Yeah. And I have been through that where I felt like, you know, I'm holding the, a weight of the whole world on my shoulders mm. and I don't have to show that, yeah. but I need to come out strong. Yeah. yeah. And little did I know that he was actually in, going through yeah, that. In, in the same you know, space. He brought it out. Mm. But when I looked at it, I was like, this performance is like, good. Wow. Yeah. It's awesome. And Beautiful it's speaking ad. to me. Yeah. Like, it's speaking to me yeah. and I love it. Yeah. But then little did I picture or think the, like the person is the actually, person going, is actually talk, mm. going through it. Yeah. Yeah. So the very fact that you're saying you still need to show up. Yeah. You know, yeah. so... If at that point in time someone tell me he was actually talking about himself, I'll go like, because I, I think really? for me it's like yeah. my art is always me talking about myself. Mm. I think even the time I was doing the Hear Me Out show, so the reason I did the Hear Me Out show, um, was to because that was like after the whole experience where I was fumbling on stage, forgetting mm. lines. So I go to a point where I was always so scared and nervous to get to like stage. Mm. I was turning down events like literally like. Are you, you know, are you free on this day when I, and I am booked, yeah, but I just don't want to show up, you know? Busy, mm. So when I was doing the Hear Me Out show, the first main reason was I was trying to remind myself, like, mm. you're a great artist. You can mm. still perform. Still you can still, it. yeah, you know what I mean? Mm. And then everything I shared there, like, for people, it's always just, you know, it's been creative. But, like, mm. I was literally just telling my journey throughout the entire show. And that whole process was me healing myself to teach myself to be on stage again yeah. you know what I mean because I was like the only way I'm going to convince myself is if I do a show because the show I'm headlining it again mm -hmm. and the spotlight is there on you again and I was like what took the the urge to perform for me was the spotlight mm -hmm. and I felt like what could bring it back for me was the spotlight mm -hmm. and so I had to find a way to headline a show mm -hmm. so all my songs for me is very true it's Every song I write, <laughs> it's, deep guy, it's, right. it's just very personal. And okay. mostly, I think when I look at it, just like I mentioned earlier, I start to think about the next person. Mm. And then I grow the idea to yeah. say, okay, let me speak for that person, that person. And that's why I think in, in God's Die Like Men, I talk about even like, you know, like parents and whatnot. But I think it's because I go to a point where I was saying, like in the house, though, think about it, right? When you're children, we're always rushing to our fathers for stuff, right? But the question that hit me is, who do our fathers run to? Mm. for help you know what i mean mm. most of the times most parents don't even have anyone to run to because mm. they are like you know you have all these people wanting so much from you and you're always the one giving mm. but like where are you receiving from where's your source and whatnot mm. so i thought about it like that and basically that's what i was saying where you feel like you're carrying the weight of the entire world on your shoulders because yeah. you as speaking from a uh, position of the head of, of a family uh, a head of a house yeah. it's you know, like everyone's looking to you. Mm. Like your wife is looking up to you. You've got the kids that are looking up to you. And anyone else that is within your household, they're mm. looking up to you. Mm -hmm. And if I uh, decide to just stick to myself, the weight is too much. So it's, I feel it's, it's very important that we, we people begin to learn to be a bit more vulnerable and also get to have people 
out there who we can talk to. Yeah. And vulnerability, I think it comes in in two ways. There's one where you get a person who's higher than you who you can talk to, or even yeah. just your peers uh, yeah. in a safe space where you can yeah. get to talk to your friends and say, guys, I think this is what I am actually going through and this is how I feel. Yeah. So please do not correct me. It is me feeling. Feeling, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. I think that's very yeah. important. And there has been this tendency where people, you tell them how you're feeling and they're telling you what you're feeling is wrong, which is mm. they, what they are saying is, is what's, what's wrong. wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They shouldn't yeah. tell you you're, what you're feeling is wrong. Mm. They should actually now try to help you move from there into mm. something else, but not tell you what you're feeling is wrong. Mm. You're the one that is feeling it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so... Um, it is true. I think um, your, your, your music, if somebody is, um, it, it, it is cross-cutting, but sometimes I feel like when, when only a certain sector of people listen to the music, there's another sector that is missing out on the important information mm-hmm. that is coming out from the music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, bye. <laughs> That's all we had for today on this program. <laughs> no. But um, a couple of things as you guys were talking, um, yeah. I was thinking, so like being a worshiper as well, like have you, have you ever felt that pull as well where um, you do have to show up, right? And maybe let's say like a, like a worship night is coming up. And obviously for those things, like rehearsal is intense. So it's not like Sunday where you're like, ah, okay, it's just here. Mm -hmm. But like rehearsal is intense, but then you go through something in the middle and you're just like, yeah, Eloni Maira worship night. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm not sure you've been with Yeah. 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 Well, truth be told, I have shared uh, my story on another channel. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Please, don't, don't watch it there. You'll tell it on this, <laughs> this channel. This but it's, it's, it's a long story, but yeah. uh, what I'm, I'm just trying to say is that there was a point in time when uh, I was going through a hard time. It was actually mm. both my wife and I were going through a hard time. And being a worship leader in church, like, mm. come Sunday, you're oh, expected. Oh, that's behind yes. the sanctions, is it? Uh, but, ro- but to to yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that one you can watch it, because uh, the owner of the channel was my, you know, my special <laughs> somebody. Please, go and watch it. It's a beautiful story. It's a yeah. beautiful story. Okay, so there were moments when, mm. last night, you've been crying, and you're feeling like, this is not, like, uh, I, yeah. I'm not okay. Yeah, like I but when you go time. to church in the morning, you mm. need to go and stand up there and then encourage somebody. Yeah, yeah. you know, God is faithful. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. Crazy, crazy. Like, he's, yeah. he's coming through for you. You mm. actually speak it to yourself. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's coming through for you. And oh, yeah, it's not easy. I can mm. tell you, if yeah. to just um, show up for the sake of showing up, mm. yeah, uh, it's not easy. But I think. Mm. It's also by the grace of God. Yeah. Yeah, we true. don't do it in our own self mm. or in our own strength, yeah. but there's this extra oomph that exactly. God does yeah. through the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, yeah. You can do this. You can stand. Yeah. I'll be able to help you stand mm. and minister. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. if you're still going through yeah. that hard time, mm. uh, he still gives you the right words to say. And yeah. um, I felt, I think with me, that, that time was... When I was vulnerable, I was I was very vulnerable for God, mm. before my pastor, and you know, like <clears throat> I even when I come before God, I would like really just let myself loose, like mm, yeah. just let myself be. I think the healing was coming in uh, easier when I was vulnerable. Mm, yeah. yeah, but when I just kept it and like not really showing it that this is what I'm going through it eats you up, especially yeah. on the inside. Mm. Yeah. So I think this issue of uh, mental health, it's not just in the secular world, even right in mm. church. Yeah, we have true. got people yeah. that are going through these same hard things. But then, like we said earlier on, we take certain things lightly. That is one. Two, we want to over-spiritualize certain things. You know, yeah. Like somebody comes to you with an issue mm. and you say, go be well. You know, yeah. but if they need professional help, mm. Mm. let them know where they can get the professional help exactly. in terms of counseling mm. and things like that. More especially if you've got people that are talking about um, committing suicide and these thoughts are coming mm. into their minds and things like that. 
there are places where they can go and get the mm. actual counseling. Yeah. Apart from the counseling that you can give them at church, you know, yes, the Holy Spirit will give us the wisdom and everything else to be able to help that person. Yeah. But at some point in time, they need to get the professional yeah. help. Tell sure. them about it. Mm. Oh. Yeah. We don't need to just make it look like, you know, it's just something that is out there, you know, mm. yeah. but it's also right there in the church. Yeah, yeah. true. Mm. I love what you said about, um, and I feel like there's a huge point in there. Like how you said, like, you know, you're leading people in worship, but to some degree, it's like it's also for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like that's that's also another good part which I've observed, like even from um, both Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think ever... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is yeah. gone. It's gone. <laughs> Thompson. Thompson. Yeah, yeah, is how like even when you're going through that stuff, the, um, the music you create, yeah. right? The worship you're leading people into, it's... It's not only for, for them. The people. Yeah, it's it's also for us. And I feel like like that's there's a beautiful point in there, guys. Like if, if you're creatives and you're watching this stuff, I mean there's a lot of pressure to write stuff for the audience because like ah you wanna have a big audience or so like what, what do their ears wanna hear? And I feel like at the end of the day, the audience also just want to know what you are that's about. True. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's like we we just don't want to hear another hit song. We want to connect with you. The, exactly. Um, so yeah. So there's there's that. Create stuff that is what you love. Stuff that can speak to you. I mean, if it can't speak to you, why do you want it speak to us? Because <laughs> I think one of the things yeah. I always say is um, my art. Whenever I'm creating, right? Because mm. I always create art in a certain space. It's not one thing that, that I'll tell you that's true is it's not everything that I make that I release. Mm. It, it's a lot of stuff I have that I don't release. Um, but it was mainly because I always say when I'm writing music, I write it first for myself. Mm. Because if it speaks to me first, I'm sure that it can speak to the other person. Mm. And I think there have been days I sit and I'm listening to a song and I'm like, oh, snap. I wrote mm. this, yeah. you know what I mean? Because in that particular moment, mm. you relate to it. And that's yeah. why I always say, at the end of the day, for me, I always say, like, look, this art and all these abilities we have, it's really good. Because there are yeah. certain times I listen to certain lyrics and I'm like, I can't imagine myself writing this. This yeah. is God that put this mm. word and that word together. And so, like, yeah. the art really needs to speak to you, like, a whole lot. So mm. that it also reaches out to the people. And yeah, sometimes we need it even more than the people. Mm. So yeah, yeah, true. Allow me to do this. Mm. Um, I know you're going to talk about it later on. Mm. But just from what he is saying, I am thinking the the song Chinyimbo. Mm. Uh, the first time I had I heard the song, the one of the things that was running through my mind was like, were you pressured to do that song? Like... Mm, did you yeah. did you have to <laughs> listen to what people are saying? Because like people saying, Chosako, Chinyin, but Chosako, mm-hmm. everyone is expecting too yeah. much from you. Yeah. And like this question might go to like both of you, mm, people who, yeah. who who write music. Mm. Do you feel pressured by your friends, your fans, our people mm. out there? Like you really need to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say, yeah. And the pressure, the funny thing about the pressure about being a creative is it comes from both ways, eh? It comes from the fans, but from yourself mm-hmm. as well. Um, so first, I think I'll answer it. Was I pressured by people to an extent? Okay. Because I think I got to a point where, because I hadn't released the song in like three years, right? Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, three mm-hmm. is like a long, <laughs> it's like a long time. <laughs> so like you would have like inboxes every day on like Facebook and mm-hmm. it's people asking, when is the next song coming? Mm-hmm. When is the next song coming? Mm-hmm. And then the thing is, anybody that, obviously follows me will tell you I support other artists a, a lot like other people's music and so you would have a situation where you post another artist song and mm-hmm. someone comments and says this is good but we want your music mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. so now there's like that constant <laughs> pressure and then I honestly would say I understood the fans because three years is a long time and it was like a three years of just sudden silence and so I got to a point where I was like okay you know what these people are a huge part of the music and what I do so I felt like, let me just let them in on what's been going on. And so I felt like, mm-hmm. okay, let me use this energy that is messing me up into mm-hmm. creating something for the people and mm-hmm. something that was going to be real and something they could really relate to as well. But also, there's usually also a pressure from yourself because what's true is we do music. It gives us fulfillment and mm-hmm. it's a, like a source of purpose for us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So as an artist, when you're not creating art, you're already 
hating yourself for not creating art and giving so the, in that instance would you say that um you were writing the song for the people or for yourself now why i'm asking this yeah. question is mm. because of the statement mm-hmm. earlier where we're saying that you know like certain things that we do yeah. we're doing it for the people and mm. sometimes we're doing for ourselves mm. so like in this instance what it was for both okay. uh, <laughs> i i really I really wanted to vent and <laughs> say and say things because yeah. the thing is this. Um, I've been a vaker. <laughs> I've been a vaker. Because <laughs> the thing is this. Um, mm. I don't. I don't express myself a whole lot. If you spend time with me, you're going to realize that I'm very held up, closed up. So what usually happens is the only place I feel like I can say things mm-hmm. is in the music when I'm creating art. I can really just pour my heart out. So I was like, you know what? I want to let out all these things I've been feeling for myself. Mm. I vent, and then also for the people to hear and understand. Okay. So it was, it went both ways. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that's the best one. Like, mm. Do you feel pressured? All the time. <laughs> All the time. It's just a matter of learning how to deal with the pressure. With the, yeah, <laughs> I think that's the thing. Yeah. I feel like you just need to learn to find how to use the pressure to create something out of okay. it. Yeah. yeah. But like the pressure is always there every yeah. single day, even right now. And then sometimes, because <laughs> sometimes also it's, you see another artist drop a song and you're like, ah, stop. Yeah, like, stop. Yeah. You know, like, ah, maybe, like yeah, for real. Like, the, I feel like the pressure is, it's everywhere. It's like you said, even yeah. sometimes you put yourself in the pressure. Mm-hmm. Like you see another artist creating and they're dropping music. It's like, they're doing what they should be doing. You know, like they're an <laughs> artist. <laughs> They're dropping music. They're, they're creating they're art. They're creating art, yeah. Why am I not doing that? Let me also, you know, there's, I feel like there's this constant pressure from people, from yourself, and then there's now those where they're just not aware of the music that's come out. <laughs> you talk at it, <laughs> and then you're like, I just, yeah, Bro, I it. <laughs> it just dropped last week. Well, like, <laughs> like, it just dropped, like, what's going on? Go yeah. and listen. Are you, were you paying attention? <laughs> you know, yeah, so there's, like, this constant pressure, but I feel like, again, like, it's, it's, it's managing the pressure. I would say there's some healthy pressure mm-hmm. um, in, because sometimes we would also just procrastinate yeah, and just true. be like, ah, okay, no, no, no the album's coming. No, they are like, but you're not working on it. No, yeah. the, the album's the coming. Album so there's mm-hmm. some healthy pressure where it's like, yo, there's people out there who can benefit from your music. What are you doing about it? Yeah. So yeah, I feel like there is some healthy pressure and it's it's a matter of managing and again, just keeping yourself in check and also just for your mental health. Like, yeah, keep yourself in check. Are you okay? Like, yeah. why are you releasing music? Is it because mm. of the pressure or is what you're creating ready to be ready put to out be there put out. Okay, yeah, and consumed? Nice yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but it, like you said, the pressure is always there. Because yeah. I think one of the times I felt the greatest pressure, um, I'll say this, I don't usually share. In 2018, when I was putting out, I think, my first single, that was Dear Man. Mm. At the time, um, Natasha Chance, I was coming up and she put out her first, she put out her first single, mm-hmm. I put out my first single. She put out her second single, I put out my second single. Mm. She put out her third, I put out my third. And then she was just coming up as well, you know what I mean? Mm. So I remember even on the Z Arts charts at the time, it was like Natasha Chansa, TCM, Jedi, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you feel like, oh, we're, we're moving on the same pace. And then you go quiet for like mm. three years. And in that space of three years, this artist oh, yo, is blah. big. Yeah. And then now you're feeling like, <laughs> What was I doing? You know what I mean? So I feel like there's also pressure like that. Mm. So I feel like as an artist, the pressure comes from all angles. Sometimes, like he said, it's because you look at another artist that's Mm. pushing and Mm -hmm. now you start to feel like they seem to be doing more than me. Mm. And so sometimes you can make that energy negative yourself by feeling Mm. like yeah, not doing enough. But sometimes you can use it as motivation and inspiration exactly, to yeah. push. Okay. And I feel like mm. for me, that helped me. Because at first I used to look at it like, ah, man, PNC is blowing up like that. Mm. And all that. But then I started saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to learn from her and just mm. use it as motivation. So yeah. it's like you mentioned where you just learn how to deal with the pressure and how to handle it. Yeah. Okay. You've, you've mentioned a lot of the three. I think it's probably going to be like my last question. Yeah. Um, you mentioned three years a lot, and it's a long time. Yeah. And even the song, actually, you did mention you know, three, three years. years. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But I feel like for everyone watching, and even for us, is how did you manage to get out of that space? Because I mean, three years is a long I had time. That question. As yeah. Well. You know, like I mean, you you <laughs> did mention like being in the spotlight kind of gave you that yeah. PS pit pit. You know what I want to say? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and then it also kind of helped you to get back. But like aside from that, like what other intentional things were you doing to get out of that space and be like, okay, you know what? Let me... Uh, maybe as you answer yeah. that, um, 
I also want you to just also speak to the part because you said that as you were going through whatever it is you were going through, the words were not there. Like you couldn't mm, come up with yeah. anything. So like as you're saying, what is it that then now kind of like inspired you? Because yeah. I, I was now I was listening to the song and I'm now thinking yeah. like, okay, so he was going through this, yeah. then time came when. He had to get out of yeah, this. Exactly. Yeah. So now what did it pop? But, okay, I think it's uh okay, it's a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> I'll try and answer. Before this. you answer, yeah. I'm sure you're wondering, what song are they talking about? Um, Dan Dan, you are doing the song in the song in this the song is called Chinimbo. Yeah. By say your name. TCM. TCM. That's the name. <laughs> Chinimbo. It's a beautiful song. Go listen to it. Pause the video, listen to it, then come back. It's on all platforms. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No. Um, okay, I'll say it's a lot of things. First of all, I think the the one deliberate step I've taken with my life is everything that I do is musical. Like my life is, like literally revolves around music. Mm. You know, from like school, I'm studying music and mm. all that stuff. So I think the first thing, after being in a bad space, mm. I think I first had to realize it and accept it. And then I started also like, been a part of a number of places that deal with like mental health mm. issues, learning more about mental health, understanding more of the position I was at. Because mm. I feel like most of the times what throws us off is we ourselves don't know the position we're mm. at. Yeah. We're not aware of it. Mm. So I needed to get to a point where I was aware of it from professional people that mm. know about it. And then being in a space of music constantly because the only thing I'm doing throughout my life, throughout my day is music. You see that I'm mm. at school, I'm at home doing musical stuff and whatnot and whatnot was helping me find myself. Mm. And so I was constantly planning and constantly thinking about how do I come back? How do I strategize better? But I feel like the, the thing that really brought me back honestly mm. is the creation process of Chinimbo. So it's one night I'm, 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 I'm on my bed, I'm laying. It's like at 23. Mm. And then I was feeling really low. I was thinking about the music. I'm thinking, I'm, ugh, man, I'm a failure with this music thing. I can't mm. seem to come back. So I was online and I posted a status. And my good friend, Legend Son, in boxes me. He's like, hey, are you okay? Mm. I'm like, ah, no, I'm not okay. Because Legend Son is close and I can mm. be vulnerable. So in the process, me and Legend Son are talking. And I was venting to him. And mm. I was telling him, look, this is what I've been going through. This is what I've been feeling. There's this pressure from the fans. There's this pressure that I'm going through. And he tells me, wait. Uh, don't tell me that stuff. Mm. Write that stuff. Mm. I'm like, write the stuff. And like, yeah, just write everything you're feeling. And so the original title of Chinimbo was not Chinimbo, the time we created it, mm. was 12 a.m. Thoughts. Mm. And so it was, <laughs> the only part of it was just the second verse. Mm. And that's why the second verse says, see, it's 12 a.m. in the morning, yeah. and I'm mm. having, yeah. And so that was the only part of the song that was there. So Legend Telling Me to Vent was, because when I, okay, the truth is, Chinimbo for me is, I think, one of my least creative things I've ever put together. Cause Damn, it's a lie. <laughs> like, so in terms of lines. Uh, I'm actually wondering what hey, it is. What are you talking about? <laughs> when I was putting it together, I was not in my poetic zone or thinking I'm writing a song or a poem. I was mm. just literally just writing the stuff coming to my head, like just thoughts mm. and what I'm feeling. And I put it together and I was like, okay, cool. And then he told me you should record it. Mm. Send it to me. And then we'll work on it. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, like, a week later, when I was taking a walk, because I'm very creative when I'm taking walks, and I was walking home, and then the chorus hit me. Mm. Like, the words came to me. And I'm like, oh, wait, these lines in here and this chorus can make sense, but it would be too random to say it's 12 a.m. in the morning. Mm. And I'm like, okay, so this is a dope chorus. Uh, let me write a verse one. Mm. So verse one is where I felt like, oh, now I'm being, you know, now I'm mm. like deliberately writing a song. So I felt like to answer your question, what really snapped me out of that reality or brought me back was that conversation with Legend Sun. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I felt like... Addressing the actual Yes, addressing things, the yeah. actual things. And then he tells me, you know what? Just write about it. Mm. And the conversation and me actually writing about it and pouring my heart out, mm. I think as I was writing, I was getting myself out of this place and... Mm. Finally yeah. feeling like, okay, I think I'm coming back. Because I think for the longest of time, I would always say, no, I'll come back. I'll mm. get back to the music. But I was not getting back to the music. Mm. I, I was creating music, but I felt like there was something missing with the music I was creating because it wasn't addressing stuff I was really going through. Yeah. And Chinimbo felt like 
that song because I was like really directly addressing the stuff. So it was, I'll say the creation process of Chinimbo and the conversation with Legends and mm. did a lot for me and helped me come back to the music. Nice, beautiful. So many nuggets I'm getting from there. So many nuggets. <laughs> like, yeah, like just deal with the thing, you know, like like yeah. face it. Because sometimes it, yeah. you kind of like, we know it's lingering in our minds, like, Ish, mm-hmm. okay, no, there's, ugh, there's just so much going on. And then we just leave it as mm-hmm. so much yeah. going on. Mm-hmm. Address the so much going on, and I like the fact that you would write it down. Journaling also is a similar process. Journal stuff down, get them out, and then yeah, you, you can you can face it head on. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely love that. It would have gone on and on and on and <laughs> on and on, but you don't have bundles enough to <laughs> to watch the yeah, complete the thing. Yeah. But yeah, man, do check out Chinimbo by how say it T C M Green. Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. Spotify, Deezer, Boom, Boom Play, Boom Apple Play, Music, Apple Music, Apple everywhere. Music, please Amazon, don't tell him YouTube. or me to send it to you. We want mm-hmm. just <laughs> stream it. Is it on YouTube? Yes, yeah, on it's, YouTube. YouTube. it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Well. It's on YouTube, so yeah. you can actually listen and check out the lyrics. Yeah, I'm a Spotify yeah. person. You are what? Um, I'm everywhere. <laughs> I'm everywhere. Yeah, I'm guys, everywhere. go to your go-to platform, <laughs> check out Chinimbo and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm sure you've heard the titles flying around, God's Day, like me, and all that. Do check them out, but start with Chinimbo. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. fire. I don't know what he's talking about, but my head knows <laughs> not my thing. Nah. Fire. Go listen to that song. TCM Green, it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Mr. C, always. Yeah, we shall continue. Thank you. Thank it was, you. It was Thank fun you. to do. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Uh, I love conversations. Oh, I must say, Chinimbo is actually a good song. My kids sing it mm. all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's I think it, 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 it can appeal to almost everyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so to the older folk, I would say, try to find time to listen to it. Yeah, it will speak to you. Yeah, yeah. it's dope. <laughs> Amazing. Spoken like a true man of God, a true <laughs> father. Train up your child in the way they wish. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you guys for watching. If you have not yet subscribed, I've just noticed actually that I didn't introduce myself because I'm humble. Mm. <laughs> I just, you know, I put the spotlight on the people who deserve it. My name is Joshua Sakala, aka Josh the Artist. Thank you for watching this video. If you have not yet subscribed, I don't know what you are waiting for. Diungani button is red in color. Pia! Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time on Behind the Music. Thank you. Thank you.